Welcome to episode 210, Leslie Wexner, the bra billionaire, how he built his empire. This is an outline of episode 210. There are three reasons why we study Leslie Wexner. First, he's a global fashion mongol based in Ohio. Second, he pioneered specialty retailing in the U.S. mall since the 1960s. He is king of the malls. Third, he's a modest man who started with just one store in 1963. Leslie Wexner owns some of the most iconic brands in the world. Victoria's Secret, Bath and Body Works, The Limited, The Express, Abercrombie and Fish, Lane Bryant. Leslie Wagner was born to Jewish family in Dayton, Ohio in 1937. His father was a Russian immigrant who owned a small retail clothing store, which they named Leslie after his son. But for Ohio State, I wouldn't have gone to college. I'm a first-generation college graduate in, in my family. Uh, a pretty small notion of the world. I don't think I was ever out of Ohio uh, until after college. After college, he went to Ohio State University Law School for two years, but he hated it. In 1962, he helped run his family store while his parents went vacation to Miami. And he came up with a different idea how to improve the business. I started the business very much by accident. I got into an argument with my father about how my dad and mom were running their neighborhood business and quite unconsciously decided that I was going to prove to my dad that my idea was better than his ideas and the things that he had done his whole life. And I opened a store. This was what uh, his first store, The Limited, looks like in 1963 in Columbus, Ohio. The distinct competitive advantage that I thought I had, and the only one, wasn't the intellect, wasn't the mirror of the idea, is that no one could outwork it. No one. If there's 24 hours in a day and I have to work 24 hours a day, then that's what I'll do seven days a week. I can work 90 or 100 hours, I can kick his ass. And I would drive, I would get up in the morning thinking that and be at that store at seven or eight in the morning and leave at midnight, sometimes one o'clock, sometimes two o'clock in the morning, seven days a week. Stores weren't open seven days a week, but I was there because I did all the bookkeeping. I did all the paperwork. I wrote all the checks. I was the whole back room of the business, and I was the manager of the store, and I was the buyer, and I was the display person. Besides outworking his competitors, a huge advantage Wexner gained in his beginning years was to focus on what young women like to wear. Uh, all, all aspects of business come together in retailing. And it's really tough because it's relentless. It's, we're guessing what young women are going to want to buy next week and three months from now. You know, businesses that are focused on young women and clothing and what they wear and, you know, really knowing that customer and being very focused. Is that now I don't have to compete with all the resources that, let's say, a department store has. I'm just competing with one merchant. And my second year in business doubled it. So at the age of about 30, I probably had a paper worth of about a million dollars. Here's a picture of Leslie Wexner in his 30s. Now the famous and sad story of Victoria's Secret, one that would earn him the nickname the Bra Billionaire. This is a picture of Roy Raymond, the founder of Victoria's Secret. Store in San Francisco, I go, I'm there for the opening and pre-opening and design and setting up the store. And about a block away, there's a small lingerie store. It's probably 800 square feet, and it was uh, kind of Victorian, so it was like velvet sofas, and I called the owner up, found out who the owner was, and I called him, I said, gee, next time I'm in San Francisco, I'd like to meet you, and he said, well, what do you do, and I told him, I had the store down the street, and he said, oh, I, I don't know, I don't want to meet you, because if I, uh, you, you just want to understand my secrets, and, uh, you know, you, you'd probably want to start a business and put me out of business, I said, no, I'm just curious, which I was, and uh, about a year later, I get a phone call. The guy says, this is Roy Raymond. Remember, we had the phone conversation. I said, oh, yeah. And he said, uh, are you still in? Would you be interested in buying my business? So it was his idea, not mine. And I said, well, I don't know. I just, I didn't, you know, been thinking about lingerie business. We hadn't done anything. We're very busy doing things. And uh, 
He said, well, uh, if you want to buy it, uh, you could buy it, but you have to come right away. And I said, well, maybe I'll be out in a week or two. He said, no, I'm, I'm, the sheriff's going to shut me down tomorrow. So if you want to buy the business, you got to come out right now. So I said, okay, and I just went out and met him. First time I met him, he told me about it. And he was going broke. And I said, if you want to buy the business, you know, here's what I have. And if you, we can come to agreement, I'll call the sheriff and tell him not to shut me down. But we know how to run stores. And he had had no experience. He, and I said, it makes sense that, you know, people buy lingerie. I didn't know what the margin was. I didn't know anything about it. Didn't know about fits, constructions, all this stuff. I said, I'll, I'd figure it out. And so they bought the business. In 1993, after a divorce and more bankruptcies, Roy Raymond committed suicide by jumping off the Golden Bridge of San Francisco. The next acquisition of Lane Bryant by betting the ranch. Lane Bryant is a fashion house for oversized women. And uh, one Friday morning, I was looking at the Wall Street Journal and it said the management of a company called Lane Bryant uh, was going to buy the company. And I thought, gee, this is kind of interesting. If, if it's a public company and the people that are running the company are going to buy the company, well, if, if that's a good deal for them, it might be a good deal for us. Um, got some public information, called the president of the company and said, well, we want to bid. And he said, well, you have to, you know, we're, we're real bidders. And uh, went to New York on a Friday afternoon, uh, met with Manufacturers Hanover Trust on a Saturday morning and arranged for a loan, bid on the company, and Monday night we owned it. The net worth of the business was about, our business was about $120 million. We borrowed $150 million and saying you've just bet the ranch. Six months later, we'd paid off all the debt. Wexler similarly bought and sold Apple, Crombie, and Fitch and made a huge profit. In 1993, at the age of 55, he married 31-year-old Abigail Coppell, who was an attorney. Together, the Wexner had four children. Latest I heard, they all went to Harvard University, making the Wexlers very proud and happy. His company, L Brand, added Bath and Body Works, with sales now exceeds that of Victoria's Secret. In 2017, Outbrand has annual sales over $12 billion a year. And with 4,000 stores in 60 countries, Wexler has built a global retail empire. What have I learned today? First, Leslie Wexler has built a global retail fashion and beauty empire from Columbus, Ohio. Second, he started with one store, The Limited, in 1963 and an argument with his dad over how to run a clothing store. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Leslie Vaxner, Nine Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.